Hello, welcome to Fire Engineering Training Minutes. I'm Jason DeFossi from Ontario, Canada, and my partner, Dalen Zartman from Columbus, Ohio. We're happy to be back sharing with you more information specific to electric and hybrid vehicle response. On the last module, we talked about identification as well as stabilization efforts on these unique vehicles. Next, we're gonna move forward and talk about uh, how the doors open, uh, different types of glass structures, as well as emergency shutdown. When approaching the vehicle to make access to your victims, remember again, EVs are different from make, model, and manufacture. Some handles will be flush, some handles will be present, and not all door handles are electromechanical. Keep in mind that when we say electromechanical door handles, that means they're being powered by the low voltage system. On this particular vehicle, when it gets in an accident and airbags deploy, the handles will automatically present themselves provided the safety system operates properly. If the handle is present, simply lift up on the handle and open the door. If the systems do not operate properly because they've been heavily damaged in the accident, then the door handle is not going to present. It's going to be in a flush position. If the handle is in a flush position, then rescuers should assume that the low voltage system has been dumped, drained, or discharged. They now need to take the glass and then access the interior of the door. Not all EVs are the same with this interior access. In some electric vehicles, it's the primary door handle. In other electric vehicles, it's a secondary mechanism. On the Lucid, it's the primary lever, and it's a two-stage action, meaning the first movement of the lever will release the locking mechanism, and the second activation will release the latch. Once the glass is removed, rescuers can then reach inside the vehicle, locate the manual activation, pull one stage to unlock the door, and then pull a second stage to open the door. As part of your extrication assignment, and you've determined that we want to isolate high voltage, we're going to need to open the hood to gain access to our first responder cut loop. As a primary objective, we'd like to access this panel and engage the hood release, and it looks like this. So after you've gained access to the hood compartment, otherwise known as the frunk and some EVs, we want to locate and identify the first responder cut loop. By simply removing this cosmetic panel with a straight pull up and away, the cable will present itself. As a first responder, you have two options. One, we can simply cut this tag out with two cuts, or B, we could disconnect this depending on the damage of the vehicle. We're gonna have Dalen uh, talk more detail about the high voltage system and what happens once this cut loop has been cut. Dalen? Let's apply some real world considerations about what happens in an accident. Everything we've just illustrated is an operational vehicle that has operational 12 volt power. However, in the case of an accident with many EVs and specifically with the Lucid, the 12 volt or low voltage systems will discharge upon deployment of the airbags. As soon as the 12 volt systems start discharging, then the pilot panels and all our operating sequences to be able to open up the hoods, gain access to the doors, put the vehicle into an initial shutdown mode, none of that is accessible to us. So in that scenario, it's very critical that we access this cut loop or the 12 volt batteries through extrication techniques, which we will demonstrate. This will be accessing this corner of the hood to gain access to the cut loop to then cut the cut loop. The second important thing to understand is in many cases, this is a redundancy on the car. We're making sure that the high voltage system is isolating the energy to the high voltage battery pack. But the Lucid vehicle is designed to do that all on its own. So as soon as the airbags deploy, it is designed to discharge 12 volt, uh, deploy the handles for access to the vehicles, and open the relay on the front of the high voltage battery pack. When we say open relays, that means we're creating a doorway that does not allow an energy to transmit through the vehicle. Now our high voltage is in a safe state, and the only important consideration that firefighters need to remember from that point moving forward is don't make physical contact with any of the high voltage components. Last point of, of emphasis is that firefighters should not be concerned about this interaction. Any tag on a vehicle that is bright yellow with an orange border or indications of fireman badging with a fire helmet and a cut indicator is a low voltage interaction that affects high voltage systems. 
So this is never going to present a significant energy hazard to any first responder interacting with it. That's right. So in this next module, we're going to talk about how to gain access when we can't operate them from the interior. We're going to be using extrication best practices for hood displacement and removal. If the front hood space and the cut loop are not accessible due to damage of the vehicle, then the next important facet that first responders need to consider is isolating energy through 12 volt interaction. Keep in mind that there's two battery locations on this vehicle and many other EVs are similar. You need to reference your guides to determine where those 12 volt locations are. In this particular vehicle, there's one 12 volt system in the center area under the rear seat. There's a secondary 12 volt system in the rear right quarter panel access of the cargo space in the rear of the vehicle. Access both those 12 volt batteries and disconnect or cut the negative cables. That will be your secondary option if the cut loop's not available. When interacting with low voltage batteries on electric vehicles, remember that many of the electric vehicles have lithium ion low voltage batteries. You should use caution and concern when interacting with those batteries, just like you would with any other lithium ion battery. With this vehicle specifically, these are AGM batteries, which are very similar to standard lead acid batteries. So you don't need to use those same precautions. We're gonna simply lift up on the front of the seat, advance it forward, and then take care of the negative cable on this 12 volt battery. You ready, Jay? Yep. Once we've removed the seat, we've exposed one of two batteries. We want to locate the negative cap battery cable and simply cut it using some clines. Once that cut is performed, we'll move on to the secondary battery. So as first responders, as we've made access into the passenger compartment, as a secondary option, we have our pilot panel or infotainment system. In this case, the panel is presented closed most times it's going to be open. We're going to show you how to engage this by simply touching. Presents itself. In here, you'll locate the hood icon. You simply touch the hood icon and the hood opens. As part of our extrication assignment, we've determined to do a 12 volt shutdown. We've showed you how to do it on the first responder cut loop, but now we're gonna show you how to do the actual 12 volt batteries themselves. First of all, if the car still has power present, we can simply engage the power trunk. As it lifts, we are then going to locate our battery. It can be found on the passenger rear quarter. Simply remove this cosmetic panel and trim out of our way, and in here, we'll notice our 12 volt battery. Our goal, is to locate the negative cable, which is black, with our clines, do a disconnect with two cuts. So today, we've located our 12 volt batteries. In this example, we have two of those. We've located our negative battery cables, and we've made double cuts on those, ensuring they don't reconnect. This vehicle now is negative 12 volt and is safe to perform our extrication assignments. Thank you for watching Fire Engineering Training Minutes.